I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this combination CCNA and Network Plus 2009 video practice exam on the OSI model. I also want to take just a moment before we get started just to give you a little encouragement if it's needed perhaps on your OSI model studies because a question that I'm commonly asked and a question that I was asking when I first began my networking studies was do I really need to know this because it's not the most exciting material in the world and it tends to be one of the first things you study so you're thinking hey I really want to get to the good stuff I want to start working with the routers that kind of thing uh, do I really need to know this beyond the exams and the answer is yes you really do and again that's beyond the exams what you'll find is the OSI model is going to give you a structured approach really for learning in the future but especially out in the field when you're troubleshooting because one thing you've got to have when you're troubleshooting a network is a structured approach. You can't just look at it as a whole and say, well, let's go in and start digging around and find the problem. You take that structured approach from layer one of the OSI model up, and you'll be amazed at how quickly it helps you become a world-class troubleshooter. So take heart. There is use for the OSI model beyond the certification exams. Now, in today's video practice exam, I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach. Usually I give you 10 questions that are much in the same formats that you'll see on your exam day, multiple choice, short answers, some, that kind of thing. Today I'm going to give you 10 words or phrases and I need you to tell me which OSI model layer or layers are described by that particular phrase. So let's jump in and get started. We're going to go through these fairly quickly so we can come back and still be under the 10 minute YouTube time limit and have time for explanation. So if you need to pause the video occasionally to think about your answer, feel free. You probably already have the answer to this one. What's the OSI layer closest to the end user? We'll go on to the next statement. Data takes the form of segments at this OSI layer. The OSI layers that map to the TCP IP models application layer. I guess these read like Jeopardy answers. You can answer in the form of a question if you want to. Telnet operates at this layer of the OSI model. Data takes the form of packets at this layer. At this layer, as I like to say, it's all ones and zeros. Which layer is generally considered the manager of the end-to-end -end communication? The layer at which network security begins or better begin. And then finally, OSPF, EIGRP, and both versions of BRIP operate at this layer. All right, let's go back and take a look at these answers, if you will, and we'll give the questions. Uh, the OSI layer closest to the end user is the application layer. When you're entering data at the keyboard, that's actually the OSI layer that you are working at. Data takes the form of segments at the transport layer. The OSI layers that map to the TCP IP models application layer, there are actually three of them. The application, presentation, and session layers of the OSI model map to the application layer of the TCP IP model. Telnet operates at the application layer of the OSI model. It's a layer 7 protocol. And the reason I bring that up here is that it's easy to think, oh, that's layer 3 because you're typing in an IP address, but you're not actually working at layer 3, you're working at layer 7. Data takes the form of packets at layer 3, the network layer. At this layer, it's all ones and zeros, and that's at the physical layer because when it all comes down to it, whatever we're transporting across that cable, it's got to be in the form of ones and zeros. Generally, the session layer is considered the manager of the end-to-end -end communication. The layer at which network security should begin is the same layer at which your troubleshooting should begin, as I mentioned earlier, and that's at the physical layer. 
we don't want to put up firewalls and have email filters and URL filtering and all this other great stuff we can have and then just not have regular good old physical security for our devices. So we definitely need to start that at the physical layer. And our routing protocols, OSPF, EIGRP, and both versions of RIP operate at what is sometimes called the routing layer of the OSI model, and that is the network layer. So again, I hope you enjoyed this particular video practice exam. I've got th over 300 videos, practice exams, and tutorials out on the main website, thebryantadvantage.com, as well as my YouTube channel, our new Network Plus 2009 dedicated website, and of course you can visit the blog for free daily exam questions, webinars, videos, and all kinds of great stuff. Again, thanks for taking the time to take this video practice exam. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.